blessed you, girl. Loves, yeah. loves being blessed. She loves everything about blackness. Black hair has always been around. Black hair has always been around. But the tools and, you know, knowledge that make black hair care accessible haven't been. Hi everyone, welcome to the No Money Mo Plants podcast. I'm your host Lebu and I'm glad you're here. Today I have an amazing guest, um, the owner of an online hair product shop. Um, Earthly Q is an online shop that sells hair products and has now ventured into um, body scrubs and bath salts and other body products. Uh, welcome Anele, please introduce your... T- <laughs> Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Anele. I am the founder and creator of SQ. We, we've become SQ Personal Care now. We started off as SQ Hair Care, but now we're personal care because we've entered into a range of skincare products. Also, we've got like a magic, magic serum coming up, which is like super exciting. But yeah. Oh. And I'm a writer, I'm a writer and I don't know if I'm an, like, an electronic engineer, but like sometimes. You are, you <laughs> are. We can, we can yeah. give it to you. <laughs> um, I always believe that our childhood says a lot about our future occupation or like what we're going to um, aspire to be one day. Um, Do you remember what it was like growing up as a child? Did you want to be anything what did you what was your aspirations i don't know like i don't think i aspire to anything i aspire to have money that's what i aspire to <laughs> no but like i'm not sure what i do know that i wanted to do for the longest of times in my life was work with computers which is how i ended up in doing electronic engineering Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't remember myself ever thinking I would be making like hair or skincare products. However, I did grow up around women who were making things a lot. So, like in primary school, my mother was involved in a project and they used to make uh, clay pots like in Gamba. <clears throat> clay pots? So okay. These, yeah, mm, so nice. they used to make those clay pots and paint them and like put like, it was like crazy stuff. They used to make jam. I remember we even have a, far- we had a farmer's day with people. They made, everything was made from sweet potatoes. What? So they had like sweet potato juice, sweet potato biscuits, sweet, everything was sweet potatoes. So I grew up with, around women who were making things. So that's the only way that, like, my childhood could indicate that I would make also. Mm. <clears throat> but otherwise, I didn't think I'd be making skincare products or hair care products. And I didn't have hair growing up. Like, I used to have, I used to be bald, so... Wait, yeah, that was what going to be my next question. Like, did you always have natural hair? No, I never had hair. Like, I only, like, I was a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> Until I got to university. <laughs> I told you old to black boy, specifically. Uh, until I left first year, and then I started doing my hair. And then that's when the problem started. Because <laughs> then you realize, oh, shucks, there's not even enough like stuff you know? for me to do my hair with, or this is expensive, or... Yeah, yeah. and in Cape Town, I, like, I, I'm from Cape Town, right? Mm. And in rural cases, in like somewhere on the side of the road, on your way to somewhere else. But like doing hair here yeah, was cheap. Like doing braids, you can pay a hundred rand. If you're paying two hundred rand to get braids here, you're paying way too much. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so same. going to get some, I wanted to, a bob. It used to cost like hundred and fifty. Mm. And I was just shook, and I can't do my hair all the time. So I need to figure out how to do it myself, but I'm not going to learn how to do braids. So I need to learn how to just care for it in mm-hmm. general. Mm-hmm. So did you, did, did, is that why you decided to go into natural hair products? Or, yeah. or did you see the money? Is that why? 
<laughs> did you see that the, there's money yeah. to be made here? A combination of both. <clears throat> a combination of both because, um, so I figured I need to take care of my hair, but everything that was in the shops, there were very few natural hair products back then. Like, mm. And the ones that were there were so expensive. Like, and most of them were pick. imported, hey? Like, it was very much yeah. American products, yeah. You know, and also I just felt like they went for my hair type. Like, I don't mm. want to mention brands now because I don't know if I can. <laughs> but like, <laughs> no, we don't have to mention brands, yeah. Yes, there were other people who would recommend stuff and when I tried out, I'm just like, mm, this feels like a spokelia hair, not like kinky hair. My hair is like quite kinky. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I started mixing my own stuff. I buy ingredients like randomly and then mix my own stuff. Then I'd mix for my family because they're like, oh, what are you using on your hair? Then I'm just like, ah, oh, guys, I'm buying all of this stuff for you. <laughs> so now you must pay me, you refund me. Mm. For the portion of my groceries that you took up. Because it is food. Point. Like most of the hair hair care, like if you watch even YouTube videos that are combining the stuff, like most of it is like mm. food. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm. So way back when when I started off, I wouldn't put anything in my hair that I wouldn't eat mm. except conditioner. Because I can't eat conditioner, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put anything like I put mayonnaise in my hair. Like mayonnaise is so great for like natural hair. Mm. We add a spoon of coconut oil to like two, two teaspoons of mayonnaise. It's, like fantastic for natural hair. It's, like softens it and makes it smoother. Or I'd make like an avocado mask or just mix a moisturizer using like random ingredients that I had in the house. Mm. And then I started like mixing for other people and then I'd make them pay me and then I just like figured, let me start a hair band. I tried partnering up with Njabulo, Bearded G Njabulo. Oh yeah, I remember him, yeah. Yes, initially I tried partnering up with Njabulo, but I don't know, I think our visions, how, how much he wanted to be involved in the business mm. and how much I wanted him to be involved in the business. They didn't correspond, and then we just end up not working together. Do you, but do, like in terms of partnerships, I, I also find that there's many people who start um, uh, like partnerships with people, and then it eventually it sort of like disappears into nothing. Do you, mm. um, like, have you changed your strategy now when you are partnering with people? Um, are you more inclined to like say hey let's sit and 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 discuss what we both envision and then we can decide whether we're going into this or do you just like go with someone that you like if you like their product or if you like what they're doing um so what like what's your strategy with that regards to that so i don't know i mean i think i make um I've got great intuition. I don't know if that's okay to say, but I've got great intuition. Uh. So, like, I've met a lot of, like, amazing people just randomly. So, because of those experiences, it's easier for me to trust my gut with a collaboration or a partnership. Mm. Because, like, there's something that I like about this person, and here's how I see that I could work with them. If it doesn't work out, it's okay, it doesn't work out, but I always try and part on good terms. Mm. Um, but yeah. I always meet like random people randomly that I can see myself working with in the future. Mm. Oh, okay, so the next question I wanted to ask um, working with other people can be difficult, but sometimes working with yourself is actually worse like because you're like why am i sabotaging myself <laughs> so what lessons have you learned in the past i think it's three years that you've been doing this what two almost two now two, almost two years be two in July. so what have you learned about yourself and like the irritating things about yourself all the good things about yourself um yeah. in these past two years one, and if I think, uh, because of my domestic situation, so I'm staying at home and it's like, 
You need to, you have your needs, but you also have people's expectations to manage. Uh, I don't stay by myself. If I live by myself, life would be a lot easier. Mm. But because I'm living with other people, I've learned, well, the during the day is not mine. They can have Oh, gosh, so you must work at night. at night. Yes. Oh, wow. Because... If I think I'm going to find time during the day, this is what, like one of the lessons. If I'm going to wait until I find time during the day, I'm not going to find time. Mm-hmm. So I must make time. And in order to make time, either I sacrifice sleep or I wake up a lot early and I'm not a morning person. Mm-hmm. So I'll just sacrifice sleep. There's, mm-hmm. There's been days I have regularly, I have days <laughs> when I just don't sleep, like I work until the next morning and then the next morning I'm continuing with my domestic stuff and then maybe I'll fall asleep that night like a light. I'll be up oh, like nice. a light. Oh. But, so that's one of the things. The second thing is um, I can be too detailed with information. Sometimes people don't want to know all that. <laughs> what do you, like in your business, they don't want to know all the details. Is that what you're saying? No, like they don't want to know all the details. They just want to know what will your product, they don't care whether it's naturally derived and organic ingredients, but like what will it do for me? So this one, like, so you learn to make your speech short. <laughs> yeah, you need to have a, an elevator pitch. That's what they always yes. say. Like. A short, like, don't quick... care up with the information that is relevant to you. Figure yeah. out what great information is relevant to the person you're speaking to. Because the way that I would speak to a customer is different from the way that I would speak to my business partner whose mm. money is involved with whatever decisions that I'm making. Mm. Whereas my customer just wants to know if this one seventy five that I'm spending on your hair product well, actually, what will it do for me? It will make it soft, it will clean your hair, it will repair your scalp's pH, and it will feel in moisture. And none of this. Yeah, no, they just, yeah, they really do. You know? <laughs> so, but, okay, so can you... Mm-hmm. Yes, if you follow the instructions. So, yeah. yeah. That's all they need, honestly. So, okay, can you describe an earthly cue girl? An earthly cue girl... She's obviously she's obviously got natural hair. Mm-hmm. Um, she's brown. Uh, she she's conscious of her impact on the environment around her. She's also conscious of that what she eats is is very important. She wants to know what she's eating. She wants to know what she's putting in her hair, and she wants to know where it's coming from, like whether or not it's responsibly sourced, because she is aware of her overall impact in mm-hmm. on the environment, and she's also aware of the impact the environment has on on her, which is why you will moisturize your hair because the environment will dry out your hair. Mm-hmm. So she's very in touch with her surroundings. She's in touch with herself. She's very introspective. She loves natural. She loves being black. Amen. Like the earthly cute girl <laughs> loves, yeah. loves being black. She loves everything about blackness. You know, there's that, there's that um, TikTok video mm. that says, don't you find it annoying when girls, like, no, no, I love it when girls do that. So it's the same with earthly cute, the earthly cute girl. She loves everything about blackness. She loves her black girl magic, she loves everything about being a woman except her period. She's not so fond of her period. <laughs> her period. <laughs> hey, brother, what do you think about that? She loves being African. Please, please, I've been meaning to ask somebody, what do you, have you seen the Libres? Is it Libres? Libri? Have you seen yeah, the Libri okay. ad on menstruation and all sorts of things? I was like, guys, is this necessary? <laughs> have you seen it? <laughs> Is this one where they like show the pads and the girls are talking? Because one may have seen. Yeah, when well, the girls are talking. Like, so. When it first came out, it was like a 20 minute ad. It was freaking long. And they were just yeah. talking about like pads and how it starts when you're a child and then it goes all the way up until you're, you're 50. I'm like, please, guys. Yeah. Shame it's, it's good. Yeah. I think but some we people need it. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. This conversation because, like, Mm. Because it's such, we don't talk about like periods and things, and like 
you know, it's like you must wrap. That's what they do around here. And the top shop, when you go and buy a pack, they wrap it up in newspaper. As if like the whole community does not know. I oh, do not. Like the whole community, everyone here knows. knows. Yeah. So why are we acting like it doesn't happen? And because we act like it doesn't happen, we don't get the service provision we need. Like mm. why are condoms free? And pads on. Yes, that is, yeah. Because we don't talk about those things and the people that are in power are men. And men, because we hide it so much, men don't know. Yes, that that is true. And maybe then this ad is for them specifically, you know? actually. Yeah. Mm. I know, we thank because God. Because we don't need to know. We mm. already know. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've worked, you've done freelance jobs right before yes but are you not work the traditional nine to five job and wow. do you feel that you have missed out in any way or do you feel that um it would have helped you in your current role like in your current um job yes um i can't i can't do a nine to five um <laughs> It's just, I've never seen it. I've never been able to visualize it. The only thing that I can visualize about a nine to five is the outfit. Is the what? Outfits? Wow. The outfit, yes. You know, like, <laughs> ooh, yes, yes, you know, I could wear it, I could wear it. Outside of that, like, none of it is attractive to me. That's um, true. But with freelance, and I love the freelance writing work because it allows me the flexibility. Like, I could write. They don't care if I'm writing at 5 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon. It allows me the flexibility that is apparently a typically Aries trait. Really? Aries people do not survive in a 95. There are so, there's so many time. Aries people that are such overachievers. And who excel, who I've seen excel in the nine to five, yeah. that I'm very surprised that that is the no. case. No, no, you know, the thing, even the money, you know, the only reason that a, a, an Aries person would be able to survive, not the only reason, obviously, because everyone's different, but one of the reasons is if the work, they enjoy the work itself, they oh, enjoy what yeah. they're doing, they are willing to wake up and go to work at night because they enjoy what they're doing, mm. one. And two, their work environment is also not toxic. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's a healthy work environment, you're doing what you love. They will never leave. Mm. They will never leave. Like, they could be getting like 2,000 reals a month, but if they're happy, there, they'll be waking up and going to the job every day for the next <laughs> 10 years. No, that is the truth. No, so, like yeah. I wouldn't work for a nine to five, but I do. Like recently, especially, I do feel like maybe I should just get a traditional job only to support myself while the business is taking off because it hasn't taken off in the way that I'd like it to take off. Mm. You know, like I'd like to have like a factory somewhere. Mm. This is pretty here in Richmond. And instead, there's a way that I'd like to do business, but I can't do business that way because I can't afford to. Mm. Because freelance work is just, it comes and it comes and it doesn't bring us pleasant. And that's the price that I have to pay. Yeah, I was actually listening to a podcast about someone who said, um, like, the, one, the um, host was asking, do you think that you should leave your job and... and do the business full time and she actually said it's too much pressure to put on a baby like your company a small yeah. company is a little baby and you love it mm. and you want it to grow but if you are basically going to rely on it as your sole income and your, yeah. your everything then it becomes too yeah. much pressure to put on yeah. on it as a as a small yeah. thing whereas you can let it grow very uh, you know um, mm. slowly but uh, simple and slow growth but good growth at the mm. same time um, I just mm. think that everyone's also, story is if different you, mm -hmm. if you have to keep supporting yourself with your business there's profit to money coming in from the business that you could be using to grow the business mm. but you're not using for yourself and your business will now stay at the same place mm. instead of using that income to grow and it's a bit of a catch twenty two, but 
Yeah. And I'm lucky because I don't have to pay rent right now. I'm living with like at home. I do things at home sometimes, but it's not like I have to. Mm. And that that gives me a certain amount of freedom with regards to the business, but also it's still a bit of pressure on the business. Mm. Mm. No, that does make sense. Uh, would you say that black the statement black hair is political? What do you what do you, what are your thoughts on that? I think so. I think so because black hair has always been around. Mm. Black hair has always been around. But the tools and, you know, knowledge that make black hair care accessible haven't been. Mm. That mm. kind of information, the tools that allow us to take care of our hair. Um, the products that allow us to take care of our hair haven't been around for a long time. Mm. And the reasons for that are political. Mm. That's very true. And because the reasons are political, it politicizes black hair. Mm. But black hair isn't always political. Like when I'm wearing my hair and I'm going to the shop, it's not a political statement. I'm not making up like I just wanna look nice. The subject of black hair is political because of the history that black hair has in in the industry, in in beauty, everywhere else it becomes political. But my existence is the same with my blackness. Blackness is political, but when I'm walking through the shops I'm not making a political statement. I'm just mm. existing, and this is my natural state of existence. Mm. That shouldn't be political. But, but it, it can. yeah, unfortunately, can be at times. Have you yeah. actually watched? I haven't watched it, but have you watched the Netflix? Um, doc is it a documentary or movie about uh, the first like hair care relaxer, um, like woman who who started that business. In like the nineteen fifties or something. No, I haven't. Yeah, I think I think it would be both of us probably. I would I think yeah. I would enjoy it. But and it, then we will revisit this podcast. Yes, we will definitely have to, to come everyone. back and watch. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've literally only I'm seen a trailer finding, for it, and yeah. it looks really good. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm keen to watch it. I haven't watched it, but. There's also this recent one that is a Cape that's like produced by a director from the Cape Club. Really? What what is What's the title? Called? Do you know it? I forgot, but it's a Cape Club director and I think it's on Netflix and there was a big like recently also, like in March. Yo, I'm gonna. D- I will definitely check it out. I am new to yeah, Netflix, we should, we so should I don't know. Things, yeah, I don't know what's have, going like, on. A review session. <laughs> I don't know what's going on on the Netflix street, but I um, yeah. I will definitely check it out. Um, are there any tips or tricks or any advice that you would give to up and coming business owners? Uh, besides the pointers that we've spoken about already. Let me see. It's always like it's always up to you to get your business to do better. Like no one else is going to do it for you. Even if you have other people working for you, they will not. It's not their responsibility to level up your business. It's your it's your business. So you're the one responsible for getting it to level up. And there's only so much information to make everything cheaper not only for yourself to get profits but also for your customers Mm. and the customer is always a priority i still also don't get it right but i'm also always trying to prioritize my customers because when they have a great experience they have an even bigger reason to come back Mm. like i don't just want to sell my products i want you to be so surprised that you got your products the next day and you want to come back again because you know I'm so efficient, you know. Mm. I still don't get it right, but I'm I'm go, I'm getting there, hopefully. And what else? No, I think that's, that's is good not a advice. joke. Like it's not a joke. Like you have to, you need a reminder. You yourself, as the owner, there needs to be a reason outside of the fact that you want money for you to continue because when the money is not coming in, you still need a reason to keep going. Mm. 
Yeah. And so having a reason outside of the money, the money is great motivation, obviously, but a reason outside of the money is super important mm. because that's what will keep you going when the money is not coming in. And there will be times when the money is not coming in. Hey, we don't need that. <laughs> Mm. It's I'm the just, truth, it's but yo, it, 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 it sounds harsh. Like, <laughs> look, it's just reality, yeah. and like people promote entrepreneurship so much that it it feels like it should be easy, but it really won't be easy. Mm-mm. It's fun. It's definitely fun. It's definitely rewarding, mm. but it's not easy. Mm. No, I can, I can. Agree, and I I hear what you're saying, and I think that's yeah. Me. But if Ukona, if Ukona Monti, if there's somebody out there, if you are one of those people and you're listening to this podcast and you never have no money days, please let's like, share your magic. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, but you must share also be magic. the person must also be an entrepreneur. They must tell us that okay, I'm an entrepreneur and I always have money. Please. Right. That's what nice we need. These are the I'm stories that we need. Shared. I could go to Thailand tomorrow <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> and you could go to Thailand tomorrow for two weeks. <laughs> uh-huh. <I know. laughs> Let us know how you're doing it, please. I uh, will. We'll definitely be looking out for those types of people. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Do you listen I to any podcasts? Fun. I do. What is your and... favorite one? I don't know about favorite ones. I haven't found a favorite one. I'm still trying to find more South African. Well, yours will now be my favorite one because I've been on your podcast. Yeah. So. <laughs> you got it. Uh, you have to. Uh, yeah, but I'm trying to listen to more South African podcasts, and it's been a bit tricky finding them. You know, uh, I actually found that. Do like, you know I own no FM? I, I literally you? found it like last week. What did you find out? Iono. Do you know Iono FM? No. I think they might have more South African podcasts. So oh, I think we can definitely send me the, 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 the information. Mm, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes. Okay, oh, thanks. it should be fun, man. Yes, thanks, babes. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Please pimp yourself you out. Where can people me. find you and where can they buy your products? Uh, you can find, you can call me. <laughs> you have a website, please, girl. <laughs> Yo, you can find us on Instagram. It's earthlyq.online online. My cell phone number and my email are on our Instagram. You can find us on our. Uh, you can shop our products on our website. It's earthlyq.online dot online, and we've got like great natural hair care information, skin care information. And until the twenty first of April, we're giving free shipping with all orders of one hundred and fifty. What? If you order something for one hundred and fifty or more, you get free shipping. Plus, you get like our magic serum. That is amazing. Or a bath bomb, one of the two. You get our magic serum or a bath bomb as our appreciation gift. That is great. So that's until the twenty fifth of April. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Alele. I hope you, yeah, I hope everything, your business becomes what you imagine it and what you envision it to be. Yes, I yeah. hope I make my million like by next year. Yeah, huh? that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. See you in the next episode with another amazing guest.